El Salvador, Trump to Europe, security risk, Army Command, Imam of Grand Mosque in Mecca says ISIS has same beliefs that we do. Oh, great. Lunch between French and Iranian leaders canceled after Holan refused to take wine off the menu. I have great respect for him, socialist or not. He's a man of principles, unlike what we have in the White House. Uh, where is this one I ask for? It's not up on the website. I guess there's no room. Uh, God. Trump the savage. El Salvador asks people. Trump listens. Blah, blah, blah. It's not here. It's it's. I you know I have to micromanage everything in my life. It's like Donald Trump with the lettuce I told you about yesterday. If I don't micromanage my website, my sound bites, my microphone level, it's not the way I want it to be. That's how Donald is. He manages the lettuce at his at his buffet, <laughs> at his venues. It doesn't make anyone wrong. It makes him. A perfectionist. You know, you could be a pragmatist and a perfectionist. Did you know that? And you could be a purist and a schmendrick at the same time. You could be a purist and a total schmuck who doesn't know what he's talking about. Listen to Ted Cruz now. Mr. Trump considers Megyn Kelly very, very scary. Thank you, Michael Moore Cruz. That's what the left is saying about him. So tell me where this is coming from. My goodness. Then you got the little... The little uh, guy, Rand, yeah, nothing against his size. I know size matters, but that's not what it is about Rand Paul. He's turned out to be, uh, there's a word for it, thin, thin, mentally thin. He is now Rand Paul trying to destroy Trump in clip six. This is very good for Hillary. Good job, guys. Go ahead. Donald Trump, he's very much afraid of questions about his bankruptcies, maybe afraid about the fact that he's uh, actually never voted in a Republican presidential primary. So, you know, for 70 years, he's been a progressive Democrat. I was wondering if maybe he's going to show up in the Democrat primary debate the next time. Well, you could work for Hillary when she wins, Rand. You've done her, her bidding. Maybe you'll get a nice job from her as a lobbyist. You do very well as a lobbyist. You know how to travel now and you know how to buy tickets on airplanes. You can do very well. You go to the chicken lunches all around America and lobby for her. You've done a very good job. Now, here's an idiot. I mean, this one, Susan Sarandon, she's been called every name under the sun for her extreme left-wing fanaticism. She's a non-entity. She's irrelevant. She hasn't been relevant since the movie Atlantic City with Burt Lancaster, and no one listening to the show even rem remembers the movie. When Susan Sarandon appeared on screen with Burt Lancaster in uh, Atlantic City, she was hot. That was, I think, 40 years ago? You know, time and gravity catches up with all of us. And I'm afraid that Susan Sarandon is quite irrelevant. So now CNN digs up this irrelevant old leftist hack in clip eight. Listen to this attack on Trump. He's like the stand-up guy at a wedding that gets drunk and just goes on and on and on. I want to know specifically. He, there's a good example of somebody who never tells you how he's going to do anything. All oh, shut up. Every, you know, shut up. Shut up, you fool. You dumb idiot. You live in Hollywood, he never tells you what he's going to do, you moron. Listen to talk radio. He was on the show two days ago. He told you what he's going to do, you sh... This is an example, and they let her get away with it. I'm sorry, Miss Sarandon, you're wrong. He was on radio the other day, and he said that when he's elected, he will do X, Y, and Z about this, that, and that. No, 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 no. He never says anything about what he's going to do. See, again, that's the narrative. He's too generic. He doesn't get specific. Well, if you want to live in your own world... Go ahead and keep repeating the big lies. So all of you who support Cruz, now you're on the same side as Ma Michael Moore, Susan Sarandon, and Rachel Madcow. Then he gets set up last night by the leprechaun. I could have warned him not to do it. I, he's, he was taken in by the leprechaun because he's a big guy, very charming, the Cyclops. O'Reilly the Cyclops seduces Trump to go on his show and then attacks him because he's not trustworthy. That's why I called him a leprechaun. And that's why I'm banned from Fox News in case you want to know the truth. It's O'Reilly who actually dictates an awful lot of who gets on what shows. You don't know that. There are guys and there are women and men on that network who like me, but I can't get on because the Cyclops, the leprechaun, doesn't let me on. The leprechaun won't forgive me for calling him the leprechaun. And the reason I called him the leprechaun is because he is a leprechaun. Listen to O'Reilly, the leprechaun, in clip 09. I want you to consider, all right? Think about it. Say, look, I might come back. Forgive. Go forward. 
Answer the questions. Look out for the folks. Just want you to consider it. You owe me milkshakes. I'll take them off the ledger if you consider it. Well, even though you and I had an agreement that you wouldn't ask me that, which we did, uh, I will therefore forget that you asked me that. But it's up to Fox. (laughs) It's not up to me, Bill. What they did. O'Reilly's a liar. O'Reilly lied to uh, Trump and Trump called him on it. O'Reilly's untrustworthy. He's Megyn Kelly in a pair of pants. The whole network has now lost credibility with most of their listeners. It won't affect their income. It won't affect their ratings. Roger Ailes will still have the mansions. Murdoch will still have his, his, his empire. I get it. But let me tell you something. Never forget that 18% of News Corporation is owned by a Saudi prince. I'll be right back. We have a a clear uh, mandate, and I've outlined how I would do it to defeat ISIS, to protect our country, to work with people, uh, to be the unified defense. And and I want to say that I am going to stand up for American Muslims because they have to be part of our concerted defense. She's for American Muslims as though the Republicans are against them. What a demagogue she is. She has a clear woman date, not a mandate, to lie to the American people and lie her way through the campaign. Everyone's working with American Muslims. Uh, Are there any who are helping us in the war against terror? I'm sure there are somewhere. However, we don't see them front and center at organizations such as CAIR. Every time there's a terrorist event, they blame Christians for some other event, or they bring up Timothy McVeigh. Donald Trump didn't say he's going to attack American Muslims, as you well know. He said he's going to make sure that we don't get a flood of new Muslims from Syria. That's what he said. And it's being distorted by these demagogues on the left, as you well know, and the the media. That's what's going on. But we have breaking news. Play the sound. This is huge, huge news from Breitbart. Trump campaign manager reveals Fox News debate chief has daughter working for Rubio. The campaign manager for GOP frontrunner Donald Trump exposed the blatant conflict of interest that the Fox News Channel has been hiding for months. Fox News has been hiding the fact that Fox News Channel VP Bill Salmon has a daughter working for the campaign of Senator Marco Rubio. Salmon's daughter, Brooke Salmon, is Rubio's national press secretary. And obviously both have a vested interest in the success of of the ice cream man and the demise of the other campaigns. So you heard it now on the Savage Nation. The executive, Bill Salmon, Fox News, has a daughter, Brooke, God bless her, who works for Rubio's campaign, giving the first-term Floridian ice cream man an obvious boost. This blatant conflict of interest has never before been disclosed to the viewers of Fox News by the network. You heard it on the Savage Nation. His daughter works for the Rubio campaign. He's one of the executives on Fox that writes the debate questions. So what more do you need to know? This is not the first conflict of interest we've heard about in this campaign. It's actually the second situation where someone in the media who's been backing a candidate has a distant relative or associate of a relative working on a campaign for someone who's running for office. Well, let's see what happens tonight with the news dancer and the shining knight in white armor, or the white knight in shining armor, or shall I say the knight in shining white armor? Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. 
conversation with the Fox News executive. His daughter works for the Rubio campaign. He's one of the executives on Fox that write the debate questions. So, you know, maybe he has his own ulterior motives. I'm not sure. But his daughter is a senior executive on the Rubio campaign. Maybe he should disclose that before he's writing the debate questions for Fox. There were no threats made. And the bottom line is this isn't about me and it's not about Megyn Kelly. It's about the way that Fox News, you know, put out a statement about Mr. Trump, which is wholly inaccurate and unfair. And it's very difficult to treat someone fairly when they're the GOP front runner and you put out a statement like that. That's uh, Corey Lewandowski, the campaign manager for Donald Trump, revealing that Fox News debate chief has daughter working for Rubio. That's all. Little conflict of interest. And there are many other conflicts of interest in this campaign. But if you just tuned in, you missed the best part of the show. And I really, at the risk of boring those who listen for three hours, I cannot go back and tell you again about blood in the water. Purists versus pragmatists. It's one of my better openings. I wrote it today after taking a bicycle ride, seeing things as clear as a bell, and I'm going to post it on michaelsavage.com. And I talked about the uh, feeding frenzy going on in the media. I talked about how they're trying to bring down Trump and why. But more particularly and most important, I talked about uh, the purists versus the pragmatists. And many of you want to talk about that. And you've been, you know, holding your fire on that one the phone numbers here the phone number here is 855-407-282 i hope i've done a good job for you today and i also predicted that there's a high likelihood that the mr trump will appear at both events tonight and the news dancer has been told to hold her high kicks uh when he appears uh, at the debate and not go after him and there's many reasons for it. it's financial never forget that we're all in, in a business i'm in a business Fox is in a business. You mustn't forget that. And we all have to function within the constraints of the business that we work in. There are limits to what we can do. And Fox has their limits. And the, the huge advertising boosts that they get from Trump come with a certain uh, responsibility to not make him the fall guy for the news, the news dancer. So they have to control the news dancer tonight and not let her kick, in, kick him in the throat. I mean, she may do a river dance if she wants. She may get out the heels and do the river dance again. That's fine. It was the new hairdo. But the river dancer has to be careful she doesn't kick him in the groin again because they're going to pay a huge penalty if they do. That would be my guess if he goes on at all. I don't know. If you'd like to take uh, up these topics and call 855-407-282, go ahead. KSFO, James, line 9. I'm not even going to answer it. I, I'm going to gag in a minute. I'll need an oxygen tent. Thanks for the call. I, d d okay. I, I'm speechless. At this stage of my career, a call goes uh, goes on. Are you on the air? Or, hello, am I on? Who is this? What? Millie? Oh, radio? Hold on. Millie, turn down the radio. Again, 21 years into the show. Still no control over the calls. Should I stop taking calls on the show since I'm having such a nightmare with call screening? I think I'm going to consider no calls on the show ever again. Or maybe a two-week ban on calls. I don't want this anymore. It destroys me. It eats my heart out. I'm a guy that's answering phones. They still come on. Hello, am I on? What? What is this? What country am I calling? Is it Hungary? All right, let's start again. KLIF. Dallas, Texas. Philip, go ahead, please. Yes, uh, Dr. Savage. Donald Trump is both a pragmatist and a realist, and that's why his campaign is resonating. There's an army of us out here so sick of these politicians apologizing, groveling. It's just pathetic. And he has wielded a terrible weapon, the truth, you know, this terrorism. I do. I love what you. I love your choice. I love your choice of words. Your language is is precise. I love it. Well, thank you. So, uh, what would you say, since you're so precise in your linguistic abilities? How would you define Ted Cruz? So, uh, but anyway, the uh, here we go again, again, again. Here we go, sir. How would you define Ted Cruz? Well, uh, I think he's sincere in his beliefs. But I believe the Savage Nation has already pointed out that he can't be elected, and it's because of the weasel factor. 
and I'll just stop there. All right, look, that's what I said. He has that look. People go by looks. They don't even know what the candidates are saying, half of them, a good percentage of them.